Tonight's game features the St. John's Redmen versus the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Big East basketball is brought to you by Piedmont, serving more cities in the East than any other airline. By Chrysler Motors, the official car and truck of the Big East, and your local Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge dealers. By at and the right choice. And by Avis Rent-A-Car, the official rental car of the Big East Conference. University of Pittsburgh Basketball is brought to you in part by Iron City Beer. You can't keep an Iron Man down. By your world-class Pittsburgh Metro Ford dealer. By Pittsburgh National Bank, the bank that's built on pride and performance. By Eaton Park, where there's always something special cooking. And by the Donnelly Directory, a better Yellow Pages and much, much more. to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Tonight, the Pitt Panthers entertain the Redmen of St. John. Both teams open up the Big East season with losses. St. John's losing at Friendly Alumni Hall in Queens, New York, 69-62 to Villanova, while Pittsburgh lost their first of the season to Georgetown at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. Final score, 62-57. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bruce Beck. Although each club still looking for their first Big East win, they are off to outstanding starts so far this campaign. The Redmen of St. John's currently 8-2. and two. They won their fourth consecutive ECAC Holiday Festival. Meanwhile, the Panthers of Pittsburgh are 9-1, and one, currently ranked number two in the nation, and they're off to their best start since 1929. Working with me once again, the former All-American Holy Cross, Ron Perry, and Ron, both clubs really looking for revenge. They're both pumped for tonight's ball game. Well, it's easy to get pumped up when you're in in front of a full house here at Fitzgerald. The December non-league schedule is over. As you mentioned, both teams off to a very fast start, but always nice and important to get that first conference Big East win. Let's talk about some of the principles for tonight's game. First of all, for the Redmen of St. John, point guard Boo Harvey, and they're looking for more productivity from Boone. Well, he's been handling the ball very well, runs the club, leads them in this third in scoring, averaging 12 a game, needs some point production off of his penetration, along with Michael Porter in the backboard, has to look for the outside jumper. Last year, Shelton Jones had two 20-point efforts against Pittsburgh and Luke Arnaseca looking for more of the same from Shelton. Well, Shelton has to start out quickly, tends to play his better ball when he gets off to the quick start, leading the team in scoring at 18 a game, must look for that offense in this one. Sean Miller is one of the big surprises this year for Pittsburgh. The freshman is currently 60% from three-point range. Well, and he's made 24 field goal attempts from that distance. St. John's as a team has only attempted 18 three-point shots. Look for him to have difficulty getting that shot with people on him. He's a very good ball handler, though. And the fierce man on the boards for Pittsburgh, Jerome Lane, 37 boards in his last two games. Led the country in rebounding last year at 6'6". He's a great offensive rebounder, too, averaging better than four rebounds a game. Must be blocked out inside by St. John's. St. John's has won seven consecutive games against the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Tonight's action from Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. We'll come back with the introduction of the starting lineups after these messages from your local station. Welcome back to the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. We're getting set for the introduction of the starting lineups. Let's go to public address announcer Clayton Hartman. And now the starting lineups for tonight's Big East basketball game. First, the guards. For St. John's, a 5'11 junior from St. Albans, New York, number three, Greg Harvey. For Pitt, a six-foot freshman from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, number three, Sean Miller. For St. John's, a 6'1 junior from Alexandria, Virginia, number four, Michael Porter. For Pitt, a 6'3 freshman from Los Angeles, California, number 22, Jason Matthews. And now the forward for St. John's, a 6'9 senior from Amityville, New York, number 31, Shelton Jones. For Pitt, a 6'5 senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 33, Demetrius Gore. 
Jaws, the 6'5 junior from Babylon, New York, number 23, Matt Thrust. And for Pitt, a 6'6 junior from Akron, Ohio, number 34, Jerome Lane. And the setters. For St. John's, a 6'11 junior from Aosta, Italy, number 14, Marco Baldi. And for Pitt, a 6'10 senior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 32, Charles Smith. The Redmen are coached by Lou Carnaseca. And coaching our Pitt Panthers, Paul Evans. Pittsburgh is 4-0 and at home. St. John's 2-1 and on the road. And we'll come back with the opening tip-off after these messages from your local station. Meaning. Pittsburgh number two in the AP and number two in the UPI poll. St. John's number 20 in the AP, number 19 in the UPI. But keep in mind that those polls came out early this week before each club lost. This is the 20th meeting between the two teams. St. John's leads the rivalry 15 to four. They have won seven in a row, and overall, they're nine and two against Pitt in Big East Conference play. Well, when you look at that graphic, look at St. John's outstanding from the foul line, and Pitt's field goal percentage defense has been very strong this year. Pittsburgh in the home white with the old gold and blue, and the Redmen of St. John's in the visiting red with the white trim. This is Sean Miller. Six-foot freshman from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Matthew shot deflected. Lane is there, and he lays it in. St. John's opening up in the tight man-to-man -man defense. We talked about Jerome Lane off the offensive boards. One of the reasons why he's always near the ball, that time finishing off. Last year against St. John's, Lane had 18 boards in each game, and St. John's quickly turns it over. Miller out of the backcourt. 24 for 40 from the three-point land thus far this year. Be tough for form to get it off in this one against the man defense. Charles Smith connects. And Pitt smoking. They lead for zip. Important for Charles Smith. We talked about Shelton Jones getting off to the quick start. He plays his better ball when he can hit his first shot, and he did that one tonight. Greg Boo Harvey plays to Michael Porter, the junior college backcourt. That's where I'm looking for John this year. Baldy jumper. And Pittsburgh has it. Demetrius score and a whistle. And we have a foul call. Nikki Crowley. The official for today's ball game. Mickey Crowley in your picture. Peter Favia and John Hannon. Looked like Marco Baldi thought that Pitt was going to get the unmolested layup, so he grabbed Charles Smith from behind. Mickey Crowley spotted it, called the two-shot intentional. It'll be Pitt's ball out of bounds after the two free throws. So Pittsburgh leading four zip, a chance for two free throws, then the ball, and Luke Karnaseka quickly calls a timeout with just a minute and seven seconds gone by. The Redmen will talk it over. Pittsburgh out of the gate quickly. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. Charles Smith at the free throw line. Two shots off the intentional foul by Marco Baldi. Pittsburgh will keep the basketball. They lead 5-zip with just a minute and seven seconds gone by in the first half. Smith, a good free throw shooter at 75% this year, and he's off the mark quickly in this one. So Pittsburgh leads by six. Coach Karnaseka calls the quick timeout. A couple of early turnovers by St. John's, then the intentional foul. I think he wants to light a quick fire under his Redmen. Things a little sloppy in the early going. Jerome Lane down low in position, and he is tough to stop in there. And they nothing Pittsburgh. One thing coaches often stress is to try to get off to the good start on the road. St. John's not doing it here. Down eight zip. The Redmen need a bucket. That is an understatement. This is where you go to your take charge guy. Try to get it to Shelton Jones if possible to get on the block. Michael Porter penetrates. The brush. Baldy with position. 
And a rebound to Demetrius Gord. Here come the Panthers in transition. Matthews with the baseline. Lays it up and in. 10-0 Pittsburgh. The Redmen of St. John's missed their flight to Pittsburgh yesterday. Five minutes before taking off, a snow cloud hit the control tower at LaGuardia Airport, knocking out all the radar gear. So St. John's went back to Queens, practiced yesterday, slept at a hotel near the airport last night, flew out of New York this morning, arriving at 10. They did not practice today. They went to their hotel room, caught some sleep, and then came to the game tonight. But one thing you worry about after you go through that story, Bruce, is will you come out and look flat? Another reason why Luke Karnaseka calls the early timeout, but the Redmen don't look like they've shaken the cobwebs yet. They need a bucket to get going. Russ to Jones. And St. John's will be very tentative on offense. Brand new 45 second clock for Karnaseka's Redmen. Hit in a 2-3 zone. They'll mix it up. They'll play a little 1-3-1, -one, some man-to-man -man defense. This opens up the lane for the outside jump shot from perhaps Porter or Harvey. Shelton Jones gets it down low. He should look for his offense. Drops to Jones. <laughs> Rebound to Rome Lane. Matthews on the outlet. Not a good pass. Forced it into Charles Smith. Too close to him, but he was looking for the big guy. Pittsburgh will keep possession. Miller will play it in. That's why you try to get it to your point guard whenever you can in transition, because he tends to make the good pass. Miller looking for Lane. And a whistle on a foul is called. St. John's fronting Lane with Jones, and behind him was Baldy. Baldy doesn't understand why he got called for the foul, but he didn't allow Jerome Lane to land on the floor. And the offensive person is entitled to come down with the ball, and Baldy blocked him before he could come down. Second foul on Baldy. Terry Bross reports it for the Redmen. Bross, who is coming back from a sprained ankle suffered earlier this year, has played in only three ball games. Demetrius Gore spins, pumps, hits. Pittsburgh, 12 nothing. Well, it's contagious when things are going well, and right now, Pitt very much in sync offensively. Michael Porter to Boo Harvey. Harvey fires. Way off the mark. Dropped with the offensive rebound. A foul is called before the shot. And it's on the Panthers. Playing on the road, you want to try to limit crowd involvement. And this hit crowd is ready to erupt the way this Panther team has started off this game. In a situation like this, does one St. John's player have to come forward and say, hey, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to get us going. Yeah, I mean, and it's easiest for the backcourt people to do it or inside for Shelton Jones. You have to go to it. On the rejection, the Panthers have the ball. Score, double pump, and the clean blockout by Brock. Pittsburgh, five for seven from the field. Let's find the ball game. Boo Harvey penetrates, and a foul is called before the shot. And it's on Sean Miller. So Miller with the difficult assignment tonight of trying to stop the speedy Boo Harvey. Yeah, the best way for him to try to play Boo Harvey is to give him some space, Bruce, force him to prove that he can hit the 17-18 footer. He plays him tight, he'll get beat on the penetration. Porter to Harvey. The backcourt averaging 24 points per game for the Redmen. St. John's trailing the ball zip, and Harvey is mugged as he tried to make a move. And it's on Jerome Lane. And that is number two on Jerome Lane. When you're not flowing smoothly offensively, you tend to hold the ball when it's swung. Who Harvey really holding it, trying to decide what to do. That was either a foul or a walk that time. And Paul oh, Evans not happy with the decision that it was a foul on Jerome Lane. Three and a half gone by first half. Jones, fall away. And a foul is called, and it's over the top of John Terry Bross. Third team foul on St. John. Pittsburgh has already committed four. Pittsburgh looks much crisper at the beginning of this game. They're faster getting out in transition. St. John just needs to get someone to get going offensively to get into this game. Charles Smith. And he's caught for set. Smith comes off a disappointing game against the Hoyas of Georgetown. Had only 12 points, Ron, and shot only three for five from the field. And he was coming off a 30-point game on national television against the Florida Gators. 
And the thing that happened to him in the Georgetown game, Bruce, is the early foul trouble. He must avoid that, and so far he has. St. John's is 0 for 6 thus far. They need a bucket. Four minutes, three seconds gone by. Still no St. John's point. Jones, blocked by Smith. Charles Smith averaging better than four blocks a game. It's a double-edged sword, though. He does reject a lot of shots, but at times it gets him into foul trouble. Crowd coming alive at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Order double pump. He hits, and St. John's is on the scoreboard at 15-28. It's like a sigh of relief for St. John's just to get on the board. Lane backs in. Reach foul called on Brooks. Each team now with four team fouls. First personal on Matt Brush. Brush is another guy that can ignite a team defensively. You talk about a team that's not getting the points, you can get it out of your defense if you dig in and play the good aggressive D, not limit, not allowing the opposition to score freely. So Jerome Lane at the free throw line, he's averaging only 9.7 points per game. That's five points or so down from last year. Do you think he's got to score more? I really do. I think particularly with Rod Brooken declared academically ineligible for the remainder of the season, the fine sophomore, I think Lane and Gore have to provide more offense along with newcomer Nate Bailey. So Pittsburgh this year lost Mike Goodson before the season, the point guard. Because of academics, and now they lose Ron Brooken after five games because of poor grades, and he's been declared academically ineligible. Porter to Brock, side jump. Rebounded by Bross, and a foul is called. And it's on Pittsburgh, and that is their fifth team foul. So if there's one thing that might catch up with Pittsburgh, it is the foul. And that's right, and we pointed out early that St. John's shooting 75% as a team from the foul line, so they can hurt you once they go to the charity strike. First foul on Charles Smith. Harvey is open. Russ keeps it alive. Rejected by Smith again. Smith with 43 blocks coming into tonight's game, and he is off and running. Well, the beauty of this one is he didn't have his body anywhere near Matt Brust on that one. The only bad thing for Pitt, he didn't keep the ball in play on the rejection to set up the Pitt fast break. Pittsburgh 13, St. John's 2. We're live from the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Matt Brust penetrates. Rebound to Rome Lane. Here's Matthews. He pulls up. Bounce called underneath, and it's pushing off on Charles Smith. That is his second personal. So Smith with two, Lane with two, and Pittsburgh with 16 fouls. Well, Pittsburgh is showing great quickness in transition. They need to get it in the hands of Sean Miller, though, in the middle of the break to really distribute the ball. Charles Smith with the quick two. The games he doesn't have productive nights in are the ones where he gets into foul trouble. Who Harvey dumps it underneath the Porter. And he gets the roll, but it won't come out. He finally pops to Sean Miller. Evan screaming for a foul. Gore penetrates. Rebound, Bross. Lane takes it away. He misses. And Lane with the follow. Now Jerome Lane just took the ball right out of the hands of Gary Bross on that one and converted where he does it best offensively on the board. Seven points for Lane, 15 to Pittsburgh. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Back Ron Perry with you, and Pittsburgh leads 15 to two with just six minutes gone by. Pittsburgh explosive in this one, and we've got bodies banging inside, and we've got great athletic moves on timing plays like that one. Charles Smith loves to block shots. St. John's trailing by 13. Rush penetrates to Porter. He hits. So Michael Porter with all four of St. John's points. He has such great vertical leaping ability, he can jump over backward people. Lane to Gore. Demetrius puts it up. And it won't go down for him. Finally picked up by Matthews. Lane on the side. Jerome Lane! What a start for Lane, nine points. And he's got a couple of offensive rebounds. He's been tough inside. We talked about him contributing more offensively. He's doing it. 
9.7 rebounds in six and a half minutes for Jerome Lane. Hit in a man-to-man -man defense now. No penetration by St. John's. They do look tentative offense. They're just standing around. No one taking charge. You need some penetration from your backcourt people. And Shelton Jones has to be more involved offensively. He's got to go get the ball. There's Jones posting up against Lane. Ball away jumper. Got it. Wow, that's what they need. They need to have Shelton involved. And if he gets it going, he can be very explosive. That's only his first bucket. 12.40 to go first half. Pittsburgh leading 17-6. Three-point attempt by Miller, rebounded by Frost. Well, we mentioned earlier, Sean Miller has made 24 of those this year. St. John's only attempted 18 so far during this 1977-78 campaign. 87. You got it. Yep. That was 10 years back on that one. So far this year would have been a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, <it would've> <laughs> Here's Ross, holds up and hands to Boo Harvey. Boo penetrates, and he hits on the baseline. So Harvey has a field goal. And St. John down by nine now, getting a little bit of flow. But Charles Smith quickly down court, and you can't let him get down because he is just dangerous. Now, it looks like Pitt, if they want to turn up the afterburners, can just run right by St. John so far. In this I'm impressed with the way Pittsburgh has come back from the loss and showing great intensity and playing really up. They really are, and they're hitting the boards. They're controlling the boards, Bruce, and getting out and running. 19 to 8, Pittsburgh. Harvey, he hits. So St. John's is warming up. 19 to 10 to score. Talked about the backcourt for St. John's contributing. They've got eight out of the 10 Redmen points. Jerome Lane to Dimitri to score. Nice Smith is open. Charles with the slam. Dimitri to score has been slowed by an ankle injury, a right ankle injury this year. He looks good in this game too, handling it well and creating opportunities like that one. Eight points for Charles Smith. Panthers by 11. St. John's has not gotten it down inside at all. Jones fall away, rebounded by Lane. Pittsburgh running well, running with rhyme and reason. Scores pass, and it was kicked by Matt Frost, and Pittsburgh will see possession. Into the ball game is Jason Williams for St. John's, and for Pittsburgh, Darrell Porter and Bobby Martin. And the crowd is really up tonight. I mean, they're really cheering because this week in Pittsburgh, there was an oil tank collapse spilling in excess of one million gallons of oil. Martin lays it up and in. And a foul is called. And the, the oil went into the Monongahela River and it affected the suburban Pittsburgh area severely. Many places didn't have water. Tonight the fans are screaming they're really ready. They're happy about it because they're seeing something very positive here from their Panthers. Everyone getting into the act, including the freshmen. Bobby Martin playing very well of late for Paul Evans. Martin comes off the 9.7 rebound effort against Georgetown. One of the few bright spots for the Panthers in this in that particular game. He shot it well, and that's a violation. Martin dropped the ball over the line and stepped over to get it. As a result, a violation on the young freshman. Very rare to see that. You always bounce the ball over the line, but when he lost it, out of his routine, it threw him off and he stepped over to get it, plus the violation. 10.35 to go. First half, Pittsburgh 23, St. John's 10. Harvey down low to Shelton Jones, losing possession of the ball. Picked up by Porter. Fast break the other way. Jerome Lane, look out! slam dunk by Jerome Lane. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. The Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Jerome Lane, a strong early candidate, 11 points, eight rebounds. I'd second that. He's been a man among boys inside. He's really controlling things down in the paint. 
He's the number three rebounder in the NCAA, averaging 13 a game. St. John's has called for a violation on the inbound play. It was not after a basket, meaning you can move with the ball. So you can get a traveling call on the inbound, and Bruss must have moved on the baseline, traveling. Miller missing the three-point attempt, rebound Jason Williams. Similar principle to when you establish your pivot foot, you can't move that pivot. Bruss did. And we have a hell of a ball called as Porter. Darrell Porter, that is, tied up Boo Harvey. So we have two quarters on the floor, by the way. Number 20 for Pittsburgh, Darrell Porter, and number four for St. John's, Michael Porter. Paul Evans with some good young talent this year. Sean Miller, got Darrell Porter out there, both freshmen. Bobby Martin, he's got three freshmen on the floor with Jason Matthews on the bench, another fine freshman. And we have an offensive foul call on Jason Williams of St. John's, pushing off against Bobby Martin. Jason Williams has come into games for the Redmen this year after committing his second personal and made some good things happen offensively for Luke Karnaseka. So far in this one, he's made them happen, but they've been personal fouls defensively. So Baldy with two fouls, Williams with two fouls for St. John's, and Lane and Smith each with two for Pittsburgh. And the next foul by either club, and it's over the limit. With the Redmen in their ambush defense, one three one half court zone. Louis calls this one the push. Porter, cross court feed, knocked away, picked up by Boo Harvey. Dishing ahead to Michael Porter, and it's lost by St. John. Good hustle by Michael Porter. That was good hustle, I think. I think Sean Miller saw a stampede coming at him, dove for the ball, and he was fortunate to see it kick off of Michael Porter's leg. Luke Karnaseka is not pleased about anything, I think he would say. Louis in his 20th year coaching the Red Men. Just celebrated his 63rd birthday. Had a great career at St. John's. Just racked up those 21 seasons year after year. Miller pumps. He's been cold. Jones with the rebound for St. John's. 9-10 to go. First half, Pittsburgh by 15. Porter, got it. So Michael Porter with six points for the Redmen. Now the backcourt is doing the job for St. John's. Pulling up, hitting the J. We talked about more productivity out of them following the Villanova game, and they're doing it. St. John staying in the half-court trap, and Michael Porter gets the steal. Here's Boo Harvey. It's four on one. Harvey with the no-look pass to Williams, who slams it home, and a foul is called on Pittsburgh. Well, that's where Boo Harvey is so tough in the open court. You want to get it to your floor general on the break, and he is so tough. He flips that ball casually over his shoulder. Darrell Porter steps underneath Jason Williams. Good hoop. Mickey Crowley picking up the blocking call. Into the game is a Lander Lewis for St. John's. Sophomore from Albany, New York. The foul on Pittsburgh was against Porter. His first, Pittsburgh over the limit. Williams will go for the three-point play. I thought it was a good call. The fans reacted, but Porter came underneath Williams, and that's where you can really have an injury where you've got a player suspended in midair. So St. John's with five straight. They have cut the lead to ten. Pitt has looked a little bit more methodical against this 1-3-1 and less instinctive. They were better when they were going right at it. Gore with a brick, gets his own rebound and puts it in. Nobody boxed down Gore. And his second effort bucket puts Pittsburgh up 5-12. That's one of the liabilities of the 1-3-1 zone. Sometimes difficult to pick out a body to box out down low from that 1-3-1 set. The front court of Pittsburgh has combined for 23 so far in the game. 23 of 27. Here's Jones posting up. Shelton fall away off the glass. Rebound. Demetrius Gore. That's the problem. He's falling away, and there are no second efforts for the Redmen. Gore fires. And Jones tips it over to Alander Lewis. Here's Michael Porter. Porter to Jones. Shelton Jones goes glass for two. Nice controlled break by St. John's. They're not an up-tempo team, but when they have the opportunity, they'll go at it. And you saw some versatility by Porter that time. He can handle it as well as shoot it. St. John's has found a little bit of rhythm. After a horrendous start, Matthews on the baseline. He took the opening, and he scores his first bucket. Pittsburgh, Lewis and Harvey, the backcourt for St. John's. Shilton Jones, Jason Williams, Matt Frost up front. 
Pittsburgh going with Sean Miller and Jason Matthews in the backcourt. Up front, Lane. Bobby Martin. And Demetrius Gore. And Gore picks up the air ball. Leads to Lane. Jerome spins and lights it in. Oh, 360 driving move. Oh, when you've got it going, you've got it going. And Jerome Lane really feels it in this one. 13 points for Jerome Lane. Can't teach a player that move. That was totally just getting the ball and shaking and baking a little bit. Matt Thrush fires. He hits. 31-19 Pittsburgh. Only way you can quiet a crowd down on the road that I can think of, and that's to tickle the twine for two. Matty Brush plays with a lot of emotion. Jerome Wade, who last year led the country in rebounding, the first guy 6'6 or under to do it in 30 years. And tonight playing with emotion, that's the key to Jerome Lane's game. I think the whole pit team has come out with a lot of intensity for this game. Foul call to Matt Brust. He was reaching over as Gore beat him to the spot. Second foul on Matt Brust. And it will be one and one at the line for Demetrius Gore. Now Terry Bross and Boo Harvey check in for the Redmond of St. John's. And Jerome Lane leads. We're rousing applause as Charles Smith comes back in. 13 points for Lane. And Terry Brown. And eight or nine rebounds. Well, he shattered his average for the year already in this first half, averaging 9.7 points a game coming in. So he was ready to get some offense, offense going. We talked about him in the open, really looking for the shot. Demetrius Gore hits the first free throw. He is playing in his 102nd straight game at Pittsburgh. He's never missed a game with an injury. He's well over 1,000 points for his career. He's a 72% free throw shooter. He's been accurate throughout his career from the line. Gore has both. Pittsburgh not a good free throw shooting team, around 66%. St. John's is 55, a very good free throw shooting team. But Pittsburgh leads it handily here by 14 with six minutes to go in the first half of play. Jason Williams fires a little out of his range. Score with the rebound. Pittsburgh running beautifully in this first half. Sean Miller, who's been quiet. Smith. And steps called on Matthews as he tried the baseline. Jason Matthews, Ron, was off to a good start this year. And the last couple of games in the Big East, He's had a little bit of trouble getting used to the physical style of play. Sure. Well, his opening game was a real baptism by fire when the Panthers traveled to the Cap Center to play Georgetown. He had seven points and six turnovers in that game, but it was a learning experience for the freshmen. Shows a lot of poise and great quickness. He'll be a good one here. Alander Lewis gets his first bucket. Lewis is only averaging three per game, but he provided a spark earlier this year when St. John's beat Kansas for the ECAC Holiday Festival Championship. St. John's has to start asserting themselves more off the offensive glass, not getting too many second or third efforts. Luke Karnasaka practically on the court as Lewis comes up with the steal. Watch Harvey. Three on two. He beats Brust. And Brust misses the chippy. Miller swipes it away. Back the other way we go. Three on two. Alley Hughes. And a beautiful executed play as Charles Smith goes last and a foul. Now that's a nice play by the freshman Sean Miller, not to mention the athletic ability of Charles Smith. Charles Smith knew if he got it to the point guard and ran the floor real hard work, he might have a chance to get it. Ross anticipates, but he can't stop that one. That's one of the reasons that Charles Smith is smiling more this year. <laughs> When you got a guard that can get it to you, hey, he's going to take him out for dinner. That's right. That's Every night. Pat in the back and just keep getting it to Sean Miller because he'll know he knows he'll get it back. Smith trying to get the three-pointer, knocked away. Smith recovered. 35-21 Pittsburgh. Kavanaugh in the game for the first time. Pat Kavanaugh, 6'2 sophomore for Pittsburgh, wears number 12. Another good floor general now backing up Sean Miller. He started the season at the point. And Gore is called for steps as he feels his way into the paint. Hilton Jones is back in for St. John's, replacing Matt Bruss. Thus far in the game, Lane and Smith have been the offensive story for Pittsburgh. His front line has really overmatched St. John's front line in his first half. 
done the job off the boards, got out and run, and played with a lot of intensity converting on their offensive end. Who Harvey to Terry Frost. Jones posting up against Thor. And Jones hits the same shot off the glass on the right baseline. That's good defense by Pitt. Doubled him up down low, but he hit the tough fadeaway. Foul call to reach against St. John's. It will be one and one for the Panthers. That's a shot that Shelton, if he doesn't make it, you know, no one's really in position to rebound it, so he has to make it go home. Really tough shot. Foul is on Terry Bross, and that is his third foul as Nate Bailey checks in. He's sophomore from Weymouth, Mass. His first appearance of the game. And now Sean Muto comes in for St. John's, a 6'11 freshman from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, replacing Bross, who has three fouls. 4.08 to go in this first half. Pittsburgh 35, St. John's 23. We're at the Gerald Fieldhouse in Pittsburgh. Charles Smith, 10 points in the game at the line, one and one. And he has not played well against St. John's over the years. Last year, he had 12 in each game and was really not a factor in each. Well, he got off to the quick start in this one. Already got 11. If he can make this, he's been matching what he's been doing the last few times against St. John's. Jones can't control. Way over the back with Bobby Martin reaching up for the ball, and it will be Pittsburgh basketball. They lead by 13. Momentum is a crazy thing in this game of basketball, particularly when the crowd gets behind you. The bounces don't go your way. Pittsburgh getting a lot of bounces in this first half. Pittsburgh opened up a 12-0 lead against St. John's before the Redmen finally scored. Really allows you to control the te tempo of the game and the pace of the game when you have that early lead. Now, Muto has some task ahead of him. This is his first Big East game, and he's trying to play Charles Smith. That'll get him into the flow of things rather quickly in league play. I asked him what it would be like to play against Smith and Sightly, and he looked back and said, a challenge. Well, he's got a little smile on his face right there, so I think he'll go out and bang around a little bit. He does have a few challenges ahead of himself this year. Smith missing the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. Williams with the rebound. Aim those last two free throws. Charles Smith didn't have the fluid follow through in either one. Lou Harvey off balance, forces the jumper, rebound Smith over the back foul call on Jason Williams of St. John's, and that is three on Williams. So both teams getting in foul difficulty, and Luke Karnasek is pivot in real bad shape. Three fouls thus far on Bross, three on Williams, and two on Baldy. Alander Lewis back in the game for St. John's. Charles Smith goes to the free throw line for one and one. Smith, the captain of the Panthers. All Big East selection last year. Sixth on the all-time Pittsburgh scoring list. Now four for seven from the line. He does a lot of things so well. At, at his height, he can handle the ball. He can do the traditional big man thing. He can rebound and score inside, but he does a lot of other things that have the pro scouts really looking at him. You think he's a forward in the NBA? Yeah, I do. I think he runs the floor, and I think he has the touch that he can face the bat. He can play small forward, and he really could. I mean, he, he's not a physical player that's going to get down underneath the basket and really bang. He's more of a finesse player. 3.30 to go in this first half. It's been all Pittsburgh. They led 12 zip. They lead 37-23. Alander Lewis back to Shelton Jones. First half been a nightmare for the Redmen. Jones. Loose inside. Out of bounds. Hits for a ball. Pitt's really done a good job of mixing up the defenses between the man-to-man -man and the zone. Panthers by 14. Bruce Beck, Ron Perry at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. It's been all Pittsburgh since the early going, 37-23 the score. And the Dodge Player of the Week, co-player of the week of the Big East Conference, Charles Smith, is having a fine ball game tonight. Last week, that 30-point effort against Florida, six rebounds, seven block shots, three steals, three assists. Not a bad game. He really put away Dwayne Shinsis in that game and went right by him as if the big center for Florida would Nailed to the floor in that one. 
Foul call in Pittsburgh. How do you explain the fact that Pittsburgh plays beautifully against Florida? They beat them by 12. They come out against Georgetown. They did not play well. They lose by five, and here in the first half, they have looked outstanding. You know, sometimes it's the start you can get off to win a ball game, and in this one, Pitt has come out so emotionally charged up. They just said, hey, we're a young team. Let's turn it around, play with intensity, and they've really done it here tonight. Now, Charles Smith was just charged with his third foul. Quarter, one and one for St. John's. And he misses it. Three minutes even to go. St. John's still trying to trap out of that half-court set. The difference in this one versus Georgetown for Charles Smith, he picked up his third foul in that game only six minutes into the ball game, so never got going, whereas in this one, he's got 12 in the first half. And a pushing foul is called against Alander Lewis. The officials have called this one tight from the outset. Foul is on 22. I guess the thing you look for, if you're a player, is if you see consistency throughout the game, you know whether you're going to be able to to get away with things or not. It's the name of the game. You have to just look for that consistency. And for younger players, that's another adjustment they have to make. If it's all tight, you have to realize you have to play the D with your feet and not reach in. And if some of them have a little trouble adjusting to that facet of the game. Miller back in replacing Matthews. Nate Bailey hitting the first free throw. The transfer from Navy, who was a part of Paul Evans' Navy team that went to the finals of the Eastern Regional. He's a tough kid, a good weak side rebounder. And again, with Rod Brooken, academically ineligible for the remainder of the season, fine sophomore forward, Bailey will help fill that void that he leaves. St. John's down 15. And they haven't scored a bucket in a while. They have to try to chip that lead down to 10 or under by halftime so that they can come out fired up for the start of the second half. Something psychological about that 10-point differential. Paul Evans is Pittsburgh club playing excellent defense, and Harvey is Paul for turning it over. Now they've mixed it up with the 2-3 zone and the man-to-man -man defense, helping out very well in this first half. And it's left St. John's tentative at times. Kavanaugh to Bailey, back to Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh said earlier today that uh, Evans has really put Pittsburgh through some tough practices this week. He was hard on the players. He said not as hard as he's been some other times. But <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> well, he's a disciplinarian, that's for sure. He demands a lot of his players, but they have a lot of respect for him. Good hustle by Sean Muto. Out of bounds to St. John. Martin and Muto tangled up. St. John's basketball. And a very important a minute and 50 seconds here as we go towards the locker room and the end of the first half. Always want to try to take the momentum, momentum into the locker room if you can. Harvey to Porter. Lewis for three. First three-point attempt. Michael Porter was way up in the air. Held ball, and this time the arrow points in Pittsburgh's favor, so... The Panthers will get it with a minute 32 to go. Well, Porter at 6-1 is averaging better than six rebounds a game, mainly because he's got great timing and outstanding leaping ability. Bailey to Miller for three. Foul call, Bailey over the top, and Sean Muto. The freshman will go skipping to the free throw line. St. John's has lost only twice this year. They lost to Kansas at Kansas, where the Jayhawks, with the longest home winning streak in the nation. And they also lost to Villanova. Coming up at the half, we'll take a look at point guards in the Big East. We'll have a wrap-up, give you an update on some scores today and tonight, and a first half recap. And that first half recap is gonna be mostly Pittsburgh. Sean, Sean Millicy is a freshman. He had the three-pointer again. Call it poise. I think if he has that one in the future, you ought to just drill it again because he can hit from that range. Hesitated that time and backed it out. Miller with no points in the game. Kavanaugh to Martin. Goes with the left hand, rejected by Jones. No call. Here's Lane. His shot rejected by Muto. And no this time he gets caught. <laughs> And Jones rubs him on the back and says, hey, you can get away with it when you're a senior, but not a freshman That's right. in this league. I, Shelton Jones is, was about as close as you could get to not having a goaltending call. It hit the glass, but it has to hit the glass and be on its downward flight with a chance to go. The ref ruled it didn't, but Muto's takeaway was clearly right, squatted right out of the rim. Pittsburgh by 17. 
40 to 23. You can see time winding down in the first half. Shot clock is five seconds behind the game clock. So shot clock now at 24. St. John needs a lift right here, either from the back quarter from Jones inside. Alander Lewis. Rebounded by Lane. 15 seconds left, first half. Pittsburgh by 17 points. And they'll go for one. Kavanaugh on the baseline. Taken away by Porter with three seconds. To Jones with two. Back to Porter. And nothing happened. No call. And the half has expired. So maybe St. John's waited a little too long. Luke Karnasek is out in the center of the court, chasing after the official, trying to get a point made. But nothing was called. And the horn sounded, ending the first half. Let's look at this last play. Was there a foul? Was it taken? I thought there was the a foul, out? Bruce, but I, let's look at the clock here and see if he got the shot off before time had expired. I think there's no time on the clock as the contact is made, so the ruling by the officials is time had run out. There was a foul, but time had run out. There's the time you should lay it up instead of trying to jam it. We'll be back after these words from your local station. Serving more cities in the east than any other airline. By Chrysler Motors, the official car and truck of the Big East, and your local Chrysler Plymouth and Dodge dealers. By AT&T, the right choice. By Avis Rent-A-Car, the official rental car of the Big East Conference. By Wang Laboratories, Wang makes it work. And by the financial professionals at Payne Weber. Bruce Beck and Ron Perry back with you. Let's take a look at the halftime statistics, which have been very much one-sided in favor of the Panthers of Pittsburgh who are shooting it pretty well from the floor while St. John's is shooting it very poorly. I think that's the story of the first half, just 34% shooting for St. John's. Good defense by Pitt. Man-to-man -man zone was bothering St. John's, made them tentative. Free throw shooting a big advantage for Pitt. Eight made to just one made for St. John's, and Pitt also out-rebounding St. John's 24-17. Lane and Smith combining for 27 for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. And for St. John's, really not much doing in the scoring column. Porter with six and Shelton Jones with six. Second nope. half of play. No one really emerged for the Redmen in that first half on the scoring column. Michael Porter buries a jumper as we begin the second half of play. Redmen of St. John's were behind 12-0. At Pittsburgh kept the heat on throughout the first half of play. Let's see what adjustments Luke on a second has made here in the second half. Four missing. And Baldy hammering Lane from behind. So Baldy, who left late in the first half, now has three personal fouls. The beautiful drop pass down low to Demetrius Gore from Sean Miller just rolled the ball on the floor. No way to steal that pass. That's why he's effective from the point guard position in the wing position. So St. John's is big man. Baldy, Frost, Williams, all with three fouls. Lane to Gore. Blocked by Jones. Gore has a back three second violation as Jerome Lane was camping in there. Paul Evans' question is how can it be three seconds though when a shot was taken by Demetrius Gore but no contact was ever made on the rim and Lane was camping and thus he was called for that violation. Shelton Jones to Boo Harvey. Down low is Brust. He misses. Jones is there. He loses the handle, gets it back, and puts it in. St. John's with four quick points. They look sharper to start off this second half going to the boards. Another indication of their passiveness in the first half. Just three foul shots. And Pittsburgh loses the ball on the baseline, but it was last touched by Matt Brust. Now against Villanova on Monday night, St. John's was down 38-25 at the half. They played a very good second half, cut the lead to six a couple times before losing that ball game by seven. 
So we might see a similar pattern here. Well, they're off to the good start, which they have to have to start this second half to try to cut this lead down. Playing with a lot more intensity here. Miller. Good defense by Harvey. Score has it knocked away, gets it back, and goes right to the basket. And lays it in, and Demetrius with eight points in the ball game. Smart play by Gore had the ball knocked away and just said, hey, if he knocked it away, it's losing to go right to the hoop. He got a lucky bounce too, Bruce. That ball went and it wasn't stolen, and he had no choice really but to go up with it. Baldi with the pump fake. Air ball, thrust rebound in the paint, lays it in. Matt Brust with four. St. John's has outscored Pitt 6-2 here in the second half. Jones with the steal, picked up by Boo Harvey, four on two St. John's break. Jones lays it in. And St. John's has quickly cut the lead to 11. Pittsburgh wants a timeout. Now Paul Evans wants to talk it over. He doesn't see the same intensity level here to start this second half. As so an 8-2 run by St. John's. Live at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. St. John's has come roaring back against Pittsburgh, and they've cut the lead to 11. John Miller missing another three-pointer. St. John's with the basketball, a different St. John's club in this second half of play, but Miller comes up with a steal. Darrell Porter, number 20 in the game for Pittsburgh. Smith to the beat three score. It's Pittsburgh thinking a little Everyone bit. hesitating with the ball. Should I shoot it or shouldn't I shoot it? They didn't do that in the first half when they built up the big lead. Thinking instead of reacting, Ron. That's right. You've got to just go with it. Sean Miller finally gets one to go down. He's missed three three-pointers, but they've all been right on the rim. In and out type shot, so he has the confidence to nail one. I know you would have kept shooting, right? You have to keep shooting it. He had talked to his dad before the game, and they want to see him take a few more shots. That's Paul Evans' instructions to him. Lane with a heck of an outlet pass to Darrell Porter. Dishes to Smith. Picture perfect execution on the break. Marco Baldi didn't see Darrell Porter up court with the ball when he finally did react. Great timing pass by Porter to Smith with a more exciting jam. Good timeout, Paul Evans says Pittsburgh has responded. Talk about the killer instinct in sports. When you have a team down, you have to try to keep them there. He didn't like what he saw to start this second half. Russ connecting for the Redmen, 46-33. 3.40 gone by, second half of play. Porter fires from long range to connect. So the freshman from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who was a wide receiver on the football team in high school and almost played uh, college football. Paul Evans, I think, glad that he decided to play hoop. Seen some good athletes on the floor. Matt Brust also recruited out of high school, a fine tight end at that level. Jones, sneaky inside, and Pittsburgh allowing the entry pass as Shelton Jones goes blast for two. Much softer defense by Pitt that time. Shelton Jones wasn't allowed to make that kind of move in the first half. Miller, alley -oop, Smith. Porter goes cross court. Good ball movement by the Panthers. Demetrius Gore wins the hoop rebound to Shelton Jones. And a foul is called. And that's on Jerome Lane for a reach. And for Mr. Lane, that is number three. So Smith and Lane each with three personal for the Panthers. On Jerome Lane is third. St. John's has beaten Pittsburgh seven consecutive times. In the last four meetings, they won by a total of seven points, so they've all been close. And if this game got down to that kind of finish, St. John's, the better free throw shooting team, would have an advantage. Baldi, Van Stoney got away with a walk. Lou Harvey directing traffic as the shot clock goes down to 20 seconds. Michael Porter, second half of that San Jacinto Junior College connection for the Redmen. Baldy hands to Boo Harvey, 10 second shot clock. Boo fires, good box out by Smith. Really was, he had Baldy shielded out beautifully on that one. Side jump, Porter. One of the things they want Darrell to work on is his outside shot. Shoots the ball a little bit with two hands, but the ball threw looked good on the last two as they both went down. Might be the best athlete in the team. Runs very well. Great quickness. 50 to 35 in favor of Pittsburgh. And a good defensive play by Gore. St. 
St. John's playing more the way they did at the beginning of the game. Paul Evans timeout, must have worked. Gore missing the chip, he has it back, puts it in. Demetrius is as well as he's played in the last couple of weeks for Paul Evans. We mentioned that he's been slowed by the ankle injury. Doesn't look quite as quick as he had the last couple of years, but now has 10 in this game, more productivity. So St. John's had cut the lead to 11, and then Paul Evans called timeout. It worked. Hit by 17. Back after these words from your local station. Pittsburgh 52, St. John's 35, second half of play. The Dutch co-player of the week in the Big East Conference, Cliff Robinson of Connecticut, who had a torrid holiday break, 42 points in one game against Hartford, and had 30 in another. And as we return to the live action, the Redmen get a quick bucket. Shelton Jones, the ball was inbounded by St. John's. Matty Bruss inbounded it. The pin was still coming out of their timeout, not even back defensively. And an offensive foul is called on Demetrius Gore. First personal on Gore. St. John's with the basketball and trailing by 15. The rule this year is that out of timeouts, the buzzer rings with 15 seconds to go. Then the ball is inbounded after that. And you've got to go out and inbound it. That's what the official did. That was not a pretty bucket, but it counted as Matt Brust banked it in from in the paint. And Matt Russ with some blood on his right cheek, so it starts to get a little physical in there. The way he plays, hard nose. Lane and Russ tried to block it, and he is upset at the call. He's screaming at John Hannon. I give him a lot of credit for trying to block that shot because Jerome Lane in a situation like this, I mean, you don't you don't want anybody to step in front of him. It's like a runaway truck. He'll bring the house down too, but Russ goes right up there with him. His body contact is a foul for sure. Said it before, but he plays the game as hard as you can. That was a great individual effort. It was. I mean, you know, a lot of players would just say, well, there goes the slam dunk. But in Bruss' case, he's going to make Lane earn it from the foul. And he didn't even believe he fouled on that one. So Jerome Lane at the free throw line for two shots. His high this year was 14 coming into this game. That was against St. Francis, and Lane is already past that. He hits the second free throw, but Jerome Lane with 17 points in the ball game, and we still have 13.30 to play. Well, he gets a lot of his points off the offensive glass, but in this game, he's also looked for the short jump shot when it's presented itself. 54-38, Pittsburgh over St. John. Jones down low, Smith guarding him. Jelton's fall away. Short, kept alive, but Smith with the rebound. Charles Smith really looks for Sean Miller. We pointed that out earlier in the game. Reason for that, he knows Sean Miller's good with the ball, and if he's open inside, he'll get it back. Pittsburgh was 25-8 and eight last year. They're looking for better numbers this campaign. Knocked out of bounds. Pitt will keep the basketball. The Panthers picked first to the Big East coaches poll this year, and for good reason, with the returning talent of Smith, Lane, and Gore up front. They have lost Michael Goodson, though, academically ineligible, along with Rod Brooken. Goodson for the season early on didn't play in Brooken. They just lost, so the young players have really come along for Paul Out of bounds, last touch by Marco Baldi. And Pitt will keep possession as Jason Williams Reports for the Red Men replacing Marco Baldi. Baldi 6'11, Williams 6'9. Gore and Miller playing catch. And a beautiful feed to Smith. That was a set play. Sean Miller looking for the streaking Smith. Had the pass been a little bit higher, I think Smith would have been able to jam it down. He'll take the two off the class, though. 17-point lead for Pittsburgh. Alander Lewis in the game for the Redmen. Rush. Rush on the baseline. And it goes out of bounds. Pittsburgh basketball in the turnover. Smith, six for six from the field in the game. And Miller, who is really not filling it up tonight, 
six assists. Very unselfish. You know, you know who he's looking for. Charles Smith. Yeah, I don't blame him. He gets it down to him. Bruce, St. John's has to try to get a couple of mini runs going in the second half to make a move in this game. Beautiful feed to Demetrius Moore, who lays it in for two more. The Panthers are up by 19. St. John's had one short run. That was it. They're not getting anything in transition because they're not doing a good job defensively in getting the rebounds so they get out and run. They're playing passive defense. Foul call as Drew Harvey made the move to the basket. It's on Porter. Non-shooting foul. Third team foul on Pittsburgh. Second foul on Porter. Thrust out to Lewis. St. John's not a good three-point shooting team. Just three for 18 coming into this ball game. They could use somebody here. Lewis shot. Has his own rebound. Lewis goes up again. Nice reverse move by Alander Lewis. Lewis is a guy that has got good range and is a potential three-point shooter. They did take one three-pointer in this game, and Shelton Jones, an unlikely candidate for that, threw up the air ball. Miller to Gore. St. John back in the 1-3-1 zone. Corner should be open. Here's the penetrating move by Gore with a floater. Rebound to Rome Lane. Foul call to Tom Brock. And he had no choice but to grab Jerome Lane. Fourth foul on Brush. St. John's has played mostly man-to-man -man in this game. A little 1-3-1 one, one. against the 1-3-1. One, one. The penetrating lanes are open. Difficult to box out. And there's the guy that is tough to box out of any set, Jerome Lane. Mel Daniels, the assistant coach with the Indiana Pacers, says that uh, Lane reminds him of Wes Unsell. I think he might be more mobile than Wes. As Lane hits the first free throw. Maybe in the uh, Chuck Person mode. Lane hits the second free throw. And Pittsburgh leads it 60 to 41. It is all Panthers. 11.05 to go, second half. Pittsburgh looking to go 10 and 1 on the season. Lewis pumps. Tipped up by Jason Williams, and he gets the roll. So the second tip was Williams, and he has five points. This is the kind of game where St. John's is going to have to extend their defense beyond the half court stripe, try to get something going out of their defense to make a run, get a few layups. Here's Lane. Rebound, Williams. And the pass foul call is on Darrell Porter as Alander Lewis tried to spring to the front court. Really not a bad foul by Porter because St. John's was off to the races on that one. Good point. Sometimes you can give one and it really makes sense. Especially before you get into the bonus. Third foul on Porter, fourth team foul on Pittsburgh. Ten and a half to go in the second half. St. John's has a lot of points to make up. Lewis to Michael Porter. And the point I was making before, you can't do it now out of very patient half-court offense. You've got to get the two, put some pressure on, and then try to get transition. Lane to Miller. Watch the pass for Smith. There's Charles. He turns. He gets it! And Miller waited patiently for his big man to run the floor to get in position. And then Charles did the rest. They tell me in Pittsburgh, Charles befriended young Sean very early in the season, and you can see why. 62-43, Pittsburgh by 19. Jason Williams penetrates, fires over Smith, and a foul is called underneath. Locking out foul, and it may be Jerome Lane got caught, and that would be number four on Lane. That might be the only way to stop him tonight with foul. And Evans goes to his bench and brings in Martin replacing Lane. But Bobby Martin will fill in nicely for Jerome Lane. He's shaking his head a little bit. He's always battling in the paint area. Played exceptionally well in this game with 19 points and 12 rebounds. It's a way to come right in with that stat. Outstanding all-around game, though, for Lane. Williams lays it up, foul call. Jason Williams can't believe it didn't drop, but it didn't. And now they get Charles Smith, and that is his fourth foul. So Smith and Lane, each with four. 9.43 left in the ball game. Pittsburgh commanding lead, 62-43. Still a lot 
of time, though, Bruce, and if you can get Lane and Smith out of the ball game for a bit, they've been the story in this one, combining for 37 between them. It's like getting Rodgers in a stare off the dance floor. <laughs> Williams hits the first free throw. Sixty-two forty-four. Pittsburgh in command, nine and a half to go. Miller to Smith. Four. Smith with the ball. Two St. John's players went for it, but the result, the Pittsburgh rebound. Martin turning. Rejected, but it will count. Goaltending call. Nice spin move in there, Ronnie. Was a nice spin move. Pitt did a good job and showed some good voice to kick this back out, get their offense going. Bobby Martin got that ball. No hesitation. We call the goaltend. He is going to be a good one. Highly recruited out of Atlantic City. Almost went to Villanova. And he's very quick. That's what I like about him. He moves very well. And there's no hesitation out of him. Ross hits the jumper. So Terry Ross connects. And it's 64-46 Pittsburgh. Ross, when he's not on the hardwood, is on the baseball diamond. Drafted by the New York Mets. Played for their little ball club last year. Class single A. And he had to get his unconditional release from the Mets in order to keep his college scholarship. So he will be a free agent. Four in the paint. Kept alive. Good block out by Bross. That's the only way to keep Smith off the board. Here's Porter in transition. This is to Jason Williams to extend. Misses. Still lose. Taken away by Martin. Fast break to beat three score. Penetrates. Puts it up and in. That's 14 for Demetrius Warren. Again, Sean Miller with his head always up. Made the good full court pass. Gore's high this year, 24 against Alabama. He's only averaging nine per game. They need him to score. Williams hitting. So Jason Williams, who is not afraid at all. And he'll go up and put it up at any time. Talked about Gore and Lane getting more offensive minded, and they've really done it in this game. And they've combined for 33. Martin. Rebound to Brock. Here's Porter. Nice dish off to Lewis, who filled the lane, and he'll go to the line for two. Porter is very unselfish. It seems at times he could almost look for his shot more. He's got a very nice release, hits it when he's open, but he's gone, you know, a number of minutes now without even scoring. He's very unselfish, and when you get a fast break opportunity, you want to get it to the foul line. It's like a clinic, threading the needle on that one. The bounce pass is more advisable, but he threaded it. But you're right, he can be too unselfish because he's a very good outside shooter, and he only takes nine shots a game. And Boo Harvey is more the point guard, really likes to fill that role. Not a great shooter, more of a, a scorer, if you will, but he's shooting under 40% for the year. Porter's got the good fall through, has to look for it for If St. John's makes the free throw here, do you look for them to go 1-3-1, one, one, uh, half-court press? They've been to wait for Boo Harvey to come back in to do that. The pressure has been the 1-3-1, one, one, but I think they should start to extend it with just 7.37 to go, Bruce. It's not enough time to sit back and let Pitt walk it up. Jones with the offensive board. He extends, lays it in, 16 for Shelton. Jones with 10 points in the second half. St. John's, if they're going to make a run, they're going to have to do it. Here's the push, 1-3-1. One, one. Darrell Porter, baseline out to Miller for three. Rebound, Porter. He got the ball to Smith somehow. Darrell Porter with some quality minutes for the Panthers in this one. Unselfish pass over to Charles Smith. I don't know how he saw him. I don't know how he got him the ball. 68-50, Pittsburgh. St. John's a couple of mini runs, but that's it. There's a three-pointer for Porter, and he hits it. And I think he's the guy that can hit that shot for Luke on a second. He's got the good ball through it again. That's just four for 20 for St. John's on the season from that distance. And that's the first one he has taken all year. 68-53, I think you ought to practice more of them because he can hit it. You need somebody on your team in the college game today to shoot the three. Here's St. John's run. Lewis penetrates all the way, lays it up and in. So five quick straight points for St. John's. They cut the lead to 13 with 6.25 to play. And on the bench is Lane with four, and on the floor is Smith with four. So if St. John's is going to make a run, it's got to be now. Bailey dishes, Porter, beautiful feed to Martin who lays it in. 
problem when you're playing from behind is there is no room for mistakes. Right. And mentally, you've got to stay with it on D. That's right. As it starts to wind down, it's going to be all your way to try to pull it off. Lewis for three. He hit St. John suddenly with two three-pointers. Hasn't been their weapon, but it can help you get back into it. And foul is called on Alander Lewis, and it's only a non-shooting foul, so it was not a bad foul at all. With 5.46 to play, and Pitt leading by 12 points. Foul is on number 22, Alander Lewis. And there is a timeout on the court. So Pittsburgh is over the limit with seven T fouls. St. John has committed only four T fouls, but the Panthers lead it by 12. Back after these messages from your local station. The Plymouth player of the game to be selected at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network as part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Bruce Beck and Ron Perry with you. 5.40 to go in the game. Pittsburgh leads by 12. We're at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. Martin outside to Bailey. Almost lost it. Lane on the floor with four fouls. Smith now on the bench with four fouls for Pittsburgh. Pitt doing a good job to work the clock. Martin fall away. He hits it. That's good execution and a decent shot. You're a little patient offensively. You work the clock down and then you convert, and that really breaks the back of the defense. St. John's has played from behind from the opening minute. They were down 12 zip. Here's Brock. He hits. St. John's is shooting is picked up in the second half. And the Redmen again have cut the lead to 12. St. John's has had lapses, though, in this game. Big lapses. They started the second half with some fire. It's really been Pitt as the aggressor in this one. Here's Lane backing down to Porter. Fires. Rebound Matt for us. Nice outlet pass before he went down. He's on the floor a lot during the course of a game. Who Harvey penetrates. Shelton Jones fires. Way off the mark. Rebound Lane. Here's Miller in transition. Miller penetrates. Nice speed. But Harvey takes it away. And then he's caught for stepping on the baseline by John Hannon. Did a nice job of trying to skip back in bounds. He was caught, though, and you can see the pit brain trust. Head coach Paul Evans and his fine assistant, John Calipari, shouting instructions out to the pit players in the court. Smith with 20 points, Lane with 19 points and 12 boards to face Pittsburgh tonight. Hilton Jones with 16 for the Redmen of St. John. Bruce Paul picked off by Brock Jones. Fall away. And St. John missed two bad shots in a row. Harvey on the baseline. He misses. Lane, long outlet pass. Here's Gore filling the lane, and he lays it in. Oh, very unselfish by Darrell Porter. And we've seen that from him on a couple of plays. There's Jerome's bounce up in the balcony. A lot of bees up there. <laughs> a lot of bees. <laughs> They're having fun tonight. Russ to Jones, who suddenly went cold here down the stretch with 3.31 to play. For the game, St. John's 47% from the field, which is pretty good considering their start. They were 0 for 7, and Pittsburgh is 52% from the field for the game. Foul is on Martin, his second. Pitt has done that to opponents all season long. One of the tops in the nation for field goal percentage defense, just allowing opponents 38% shooting from the field all year. That's good D. It's really a much better stat than how many points you're allowing. Do you agree? It is, because I think the points you're allowing is dictated a lot of times by the tempo of game you play. Remember when I was in school, Princeton was always among the nation's top defensive clubs, and they played a very, very much a ball control type of offense, so teams couldn't score much against them. St. Peter's, same thing. Jones trying to get the second. We have a lane violation. Bobby Martin is way over. Yeah, he, 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 he was called for the lane violation earlier when he was shooting, wasn't he? That's right. He was over that time before Shelton released it, so the officials give the shot a chance to go, but if it doesn't, it's another try for Shelton. So this is a chance for the hat trick for Shelton. And he goes over for three, but he fights for the ball, and St. John's comes up with it. 
325 to play. Pittsburgh by a bundle, 14. Rush fires. St. John's has gone cold. Steve Shereen in the game. Quickly gets a rebound and puts it in. So no one knew he was on the floor, including me. And it's a 12-point lead for Pittsburgh. Surprised everyone with that board. Pitt can't just lay down here. They have to remain aggressive with the ball. Score. Kept alive by Martin. Lane missing. And finally, Brust is there. Two on two. Michael Porter. He drives. He goes airborne. Jones misses the follow. And there's Lane again. Pittsburgh still running wildly with the big lead. Might be better off the out. Just packing it out. Nice job by Gore. That's some veteran play right there. He's a senior. Knew enough that the clock was their ally right now. Not a wild shot. Knocked out of bounds. New 45 second clock pit ball. Charles Smith reports for the Panthers. So down the stretch we go. 231 to play. Pittsburgh by 12. Bruce Beck and Ron Perry back with you in Pittsburgh where the Allegheny and the Monongahela form a confluence at the Ohio River with 2.31 to play. Pittsburgh leading St. John's by 12 after that super start. Viewers getting a little bit of everything in this one. The Rivers, Oil Slicks, in addition to some well-played basketball, particularly by the Panthers. John Miller outside to Jerome Lane. And Lane has been a tower of strength tonight. He played well last year against St. John. Pittsburgh looking for their first win against the Redmen in eight games. St. John's has owned Pittsburgh in this rivalry. And a whistle called in the loose ball. And it's on Sean Muto of St. John. The last Pittsburgh win was in January of 1984 when they won by two in overtime at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Since then, they've lost by three, by 31, by 21, by one, by three, by one, by two. <laughs> I know the last, I knew the last several games had been all close ones, and I think that's why you start wondering, is there some sort of a jinx when you play the Redmond? But the players change, and there are a lot of new bodies here, and I don't think these freshmen know anything about that. For right, fit. that's a good point. Whole new, whole new outlook. The only blowouts were the year that St. John's went to the uh, Final Four with Barry and Mullen and company. And they blew a lot of teams out then. Two minutes, one second to play. Pittsburgh leading by 12 points. Pittsburgh over the limit. The next St. John's foul, they're over the limit. And another reset of a 45-second clock to set the floor for you for St. John's. They go with Alander Lewis, Steve Sharina, Sean Muto, Matt Brush, Jason Williams for Pittsburgh. It's Miller and Darrell Porter in the backcourt. Gore, Lane, and Smith up front. Fast game. This is why it isn't fun to be trailing by 12 with just a minute 40 to go because you have to play a lot of defense. I think St. John's going to try to reach in and foul someone and get the ball back. Just not enough time left to let Pitt work the whole clock down. Brush can't foul. He has four. Demetrius Gore putting on a little bit of uh, ball handling with the drink. There's frustration on the part of Brust. I mean, he plays so hard every game. He's got cuts and bruises to show for it. But he will not quit. He, he can't stand when anybody in the other team gets an uncontested layup. Well, we saw that earlier in this game when Jerome Lane seemingly had an uncontested jam. He get in the way of that one. Demetrius Gore at the foul line. He's had a very good game, 16 points, season high. His outside touch has returned. And he hits the free throw. Been bothered all year by a sprained left ankle. He's wearing an air splint on that ankle. But tonight, no sign of an ankle injury. I mean, he's a thousand plus point scorer here at Pitt. He's a guy they should be able to go to to get some points for them. Steve Sharina, looking inside, gets to Sean Muto. Kept alive by Jason Williams, who has played well off the bench for St. John's. He lays it up and in. Still 12 points for Pittsburgh. And it seems as though St. John's has just tried all night to get the lead down instead of trying to do anything else. When you fall behind so quickly and you don't make it up in the first half, that's what happens. Yeah, it's that kind of a game when you're down 15-2, 12-zip, 15-2 to start the game. It's an uphill climb the whole way. 
And when you're playing against an explosive team like Pitt, it makes it that much more difficult. Here's Sean Miller at the free throw line. Six foot freshman from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Only has two points in the game after averaging 10 and a half per contest coming in. And he hits the first free throw. This was a guy who at seven years old was appearing at halftime of games here at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, putting on ball handling and shooting exhibitions. He was on the Tonight Show, and that's incredible. And he became a quality high school player and now a pretty good freshman. That's why he's got great court sense. I think against Georgetown and St. John's against the tough man, it's tough for him to get his shot off, though. And Lander Lewis missing. There's Williams again, and Jason Williams gets the basket and a foul and a chance for St. John's to cut the lead to 10 with 46 seconds to play. You're saying he's got great court sense because he knows this court for 12 years? <laughs> Plus, he was with <laughs> handling the ball at such a young age, going around with his dad. I talked to his dad, as I mentioned before the game, and he says they've done about 350 camps together. I think when you're exposed to that and you're in front of people, it doesn't phase you as you get older to get in front of 6,000 or 7,000 here at Fitzgerald. Don't take it so serious. I talked my right? way out of that one. Yes. <laughs> Ten-point lead for Pittsburgh with 40 seconds to play. And it will be a foul and another one and one. Pittsburgh, number two in the nation. They will probably drop to five or six this week after the loss to Georgetown, but they will improve to 10 and one tonight, and one and one in Big East Conference play. And they still have the inside track on that Big East regular season title, I would think. Jerome Lane leaves the ball game. And what a game it was for him. 19 points, 16 rebounds. And up to the balcony, Lots of bees. Are they R's or B's up there? I think they're B's. Miller hits the first free throw. He wants it 51 straight in high school. 79-67. It's academic now. They love Jerome. Sometimes he comes to play. Other nights he doesn't. Tonight he came to play. Rush. Following it up. Missed the jam. Muto, foul call as he makes the hoop. So Sean Muto getting some important minutes off the stretch. Off the bench. Coming up for St. John's. Tuesday they play Rutgers at Madison Square Garden. Next Saturday they entertain Seton Hall. And then Wednesday, January 20th at Georgetown. For Pittsburgh, this is the busiest stretch of the year for them. Monday they play Duquesne. Wednesday, UConn. And next Saturday, Villanova all at home. And then they play Oklahoma at Oklahoma Saturday, January 23rd. I'd like to see the numbers from that game. It's going to be up in the 90s or 100s. Oklahoma loves to run. Challenging non-league game. Pittsburgh leads by nine with 10 seconds left. Martin back to Bailey. Six seconds left in the game. Miller puts it up. Rejected by Jason Williams. But a goaltending is called. And Pittsburgh with the... 81-70 lead and three seconds to play. I don't think there's any question about that one. No. Williams at the buzzer, and that is it. An impressive show of speed and strength as the Panthers of Pittsburgh won it 81-70 at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse, where they are now 5-0. We'll be back with the postgame show and more in a moment. For the game tonight, no doubt about it, Jerome Lane with 19 points and 15 rebounds. He was a factor from the very beginning when Pittsburgh opened up a 12-0 lead and route to a 40-23 halftime advantage. And Jerome Lane, the uh, junior from Akron, Ohio, our player of the game, and he's standing by right now with Ron Perry. Ron? Jerome, outstanding game in this one. You had 19 points and 15 rebounds in the contest. Were you thinking before the game... You, know, you always do a job off the boards that you were going to look more for your offense in this game because you really look good offensively. Well, uh, I'm already know I'm going to go in the game rebound-wise, but I think I have my little tennis on the uh, offense. So I thought I had to get more involved so I could help the team out more so I could be more, uh, more of a part of the team. Uh, early in the season, I wasn't a part of offensively, but I was rebounding-wise. Well, you're always a part of things rebounding-wise. In the early going, you got some of your points off of the offensive boards, but it seemed when you were open, you were definitely looking for the shot. Well, they was playing behind me on offense, so I could get the ball on the post, so it was easy, easy for me to score tonight. 
but I hope um, later on down the line that I keep being involved in the offense and I can keep helping the team out scoring-wise. I thought, Jerome, that the team really came out and had a lot of intensity on defense in this game. You really limited St. John's, and you jumped out of the blocks very quickly. You had them 15-2 to two to start the game, and I thought the defense was really intense against St. John's. We've been playing defense good all year. Uh, nobody has got on thick over 70 all year, so we've been playing great defense. So I give our team a lot of credit on our defense that we've been playing this year. You and Charles really had productive games inside, and I thought it was a big plus for the Panthers that Demetrius Gore really got his game going as well. Uh, Demetrius got his game going through on the Christmas um, break when he was out on Florida, and he's been coming through real well, and he's been getting a lot of minutes now, and he's been scoring very well on the offensive um, um, end. How do you see the Big East this year? I mean, you had a tough road game against Georgetown, um, intense defense in that game by both teams, but I thought it was important that your team came out and really played well in this one to get your first Big East win. Well, I think as we get down later on through the season, we'll be a better team, and I'll, it is going to be hard for somebody to beat us because we have a great team, great bench, and um, Pitt is on the rise right now. Well, they certainly are. When you keep playing that way, it certainly helps the cause. Nice job, Jerome. Right, thank you. Okay, it's been Jerome Lane, outstanding ball game in this one. Back to you, Bruce. Thank you, Ron. So Jerome Lane leads the Panthers to their 10th victory of the year. The final score is 81 to 70. And when we come back, we'll talk to Paul Evans, the winning head coach of the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh over St. John's. The final score, 81 to 70. Paul Evans in his second year at Pittsburgh is 35 and 9 at Pitt. And he's standing by with Ron Perry right now. Any special pregame message in this game? Your team really jumped out of the blocks quickly. 12 0, 15 to 2 lead. Well, not really. We just knew that we had to play with a more, lot more intensity than we started the Georgetown game with, and we knew we had to win this game. We didn't want to start off the conference 0-2, which would have really put us in a hole, and we can't lose that home game like we did last year against St. John. We talk a lot about coaching strategies, but when you get that kind of lead, it allows you to play your game more. Well, it does, but I think it kind of scares you, too, because you're just <laughs> waiting for them to come back. You don't know whether you should sub or you should wait. And, um, you know, I think sometimes the kids lose some intensity there, and it's tough to get the intensity back. Really dominated this game on the front line with Jerome dominating the boards. Charles had 20 points, and Demetrius Gore also contributed. And I think with the loss of Rod Brooken, getting some point production out of Lane and Gore is really important for the club. Right, it's real important, and Lane has been having a very poor shooting performance, you know, up until this time. They shoot 40-some percent from the field, and worse, maybe, at the foul line. So it's nice to see him come out of that slump. He's been playing well the last three or four games and rebounding very well, but he really hasn't been able to make the easy shots, which he did tonight, made a couple jump shots, and really did a lot better on the foul line. Well, and the other thing that people don't realize a lot is that you have a lot of young players in this team. There are times when you've got three freshmen on the floor, and I think they're gaining valuable experience with these Big East games. Yeah, I think they're getting experience, <laughs> but I think that's what's given us our inconsistency. You know, we play sometimes remarkably well and have our fast break going, and then the next time down we don't do anything. It gets kind of frustrating because of the inconsistencies, but I think that's probably the nature of having three freshmen out there. There's been a lot of talk of Sean Miller. He handles the ball so well at the point. He's like a... You know, a kid who's really coming along, doesn't play like a freshman at times. I've been very impressed with the way Bobby Martin is coming along inside. Right. He didn't play quite as well tonight as he did in our loss to Georgetown because I think he didn't, you know, have the intensity. He didn't make a couple shots he could have if he would have been a little bit stronger with it or dunked it. But he's come a long way since the first couple of games when, you know, he had a lot of trouble inside. Well, good win for the Panthers in this one, and I know you're happy to get that first Big East win. For sure. Thanks, Ron. Nice job. It's been Paul Evans, happy to get this first win at Fitzgerald. Back to you, Bruce. Thank you, Ron. So the Panthers of Pittsburgh are now 10-1 and one on the season, 1-1 one and one in Big East Conference play. The Redmen of St. John's 8-3 and three overall, 0-2 oh in the Big East Conference. Pittsburgh led 12-0 at the beginning of this ballgame, 15-2, up 40-23 at the half, and then they roll to an 81-70 victory of the Redmen of St. John's. Other scores in the Big East tonight. 83-77 Syracuse leading Seton Hall with a minute remaining at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. Jerome Lane finishing the game for Pittsburgh with 19 points and 15 rebounds. 20 points for Charles Smith, 16 for Demetrius Gore. Shelton Jones, 16 for the Redmen of St. John's, 11 for Jason Williams, 10 for Matt Frost. But the story, explosive Pittsburgh play off the boards and they ran the fast break. Hey, they also played some defense. That's right, and they did it early. They got off the blocks and ran, as Paul Evans said. It makes him a little nervous at times having the big lead, but I think he'll take that particularly at home. Our thanks to our statisticians tonight, John Duffy and Jerry Shad. 
For Ron Perry, I'm Bruce Beck. Thanks so much for joining us at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse tonight, where the Panthers have defeated the Redmen of St. John's by a final score of 81 to 70. Big East Conference Television Network production.